Hello, we are the Keikos? I'm Yolanda and this is my husband John. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, take Chicoria from the garden all the way to the table. And uh, what else was I supposed to say? <laughs> Let's get, get started. started. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So we're going to start talking a little bit about gardening and my name is John Keiko. I am the son of Eugene Keiko, born and raised in Northern Ontario. And we did a lot of gardening because we had a large family and my, fa my father was a great gardener. I've been gardening for over 70 years because he started me out at about 10 years old or 8 years old. And he showed me how to dig a garden and how to plant certain things and uh, how to do compost heaps. So I learned everything from him. And then from that point on, I've been gardening. In all the different homes that we lived in, I've always had a fairly large garden. So now we're in Toronto. I have a much smaller garden, I still garden, and, uh, and enjoy gardening very much. So the first thing we got to talk about is the soil. We do composting. I compost uh, all greens that we cut in the back. But I'll just show you, this is the primary one. This is where I put in leaves. Um, I put in things like uh, uh, leaves from the garden, from my uh, plants, soft leaves, no sticks, uh, no um, uh, stuff from the kitchen because I don't want animals getting in here. Uh, I put rhubarb leaves in there, for instance. Um, and I also put trimmings from my lawn on the sides. I put that in there. And I just leave it in there and I, I turn it over once or twice to give you an idea. This is this is almost ready. To, it's looking pretty good. There's no sign of green in there. It's already it breaks down so fast in the summer. There's tons of worms in there, all kinds of worms. From there, I shovel it into this, put it into here. And what I get here is a nice breakdown of nice compost. You'll notice. It's got a nice color to it and it's soft and that's what we put on top of the garden. Now what happens is in the early spring, about uh, early May, uh, late April to early May, I dig the garden. And what I use is a sh shovel, a long handle shovel, and I dig it to the depth of the shovel blade, which is about eight inches. Turn it over. And on top of that, I put about an inch to an inch, two inches of compost, spread it, and I leave it for about two weeks. Then I uh, start to work out uh, what I'm going to plant and where. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, chicoria or chicory. And um, I have it right in front of me. So this is planted by seed. You just I buy the seed and. Uh, I've, uh, I planted this particular area here, I broadcasted the seed so that the, the seeds are farther apart and they grow into semi-heads. And I also planted sometimes uh, in a row uh, and the seed is more crowded and I have to uh, thin them out. And when you thin them out, this is a chance for you to transplant uh, the odd one so that it'll turn into a head. And what we do for transplanting is this. Here we are, we pick, we pick, uh, uh, this is a thinned out one, and we take the, the, uh, the root and cut a quarter off. That's it. That's what my father taught me. There's no scientific uh, proof that it does anything, but he never uh, failed to have great heads of lettuce and uh, chicory. So to transplant it, no problem at all. We just have a little hole here. I've got a special trowel for transplanting uh, vegetables and also for um, for bulbs. It's really great. We just put it in and put the soil around, water it and leave it alone. And eventually it'll turn into a head. And that's transplanting. And incidentally, you could do that with uh, Swiss char. You could do it with any kind of lettuce. 
doesn't matter what kind of lettuce, do the same thing. I always cut the root, about a quarter of the root off. Again, I never checked why that works, but uh, that's it. Now, on these, I really don't have to do very much with this. Sometimes you see the odd leaf that's, uh, that's rotted, and uh, I will pick it or get rid of it. And, uh, but other than that, uh, nothing touches, uh, no, there's no bugs in here, nothing touches uh, Chicoria. It's tough stuff, and I think it's because it's bitter has a lot of iron in it, it's very good. The chicory or chicoria is part of the chicory family which includes um, dandelion, uh, escarole, uh, it also includes uh, radicchio, endive. So those are the offshoots or the semi uh, chicory family and it has a very nice leaf. There it is and it's bitter it's got a nice bitter taste to it and the first pickings are usually the most tender and as you go along you, for instance after about the third or fourth picking it gets tougher uh, it's still bitter seems to be a little bit more bitter but it's still okay you just have to cook it more often more uh, longer uh, and don't you don't use it later on we don't use it uh, raw in salads as much but the early ones we use in salads it's now July, about mid-July in Toronto, and the chicory uh, is ready for picking. In fact, we've already had one picking uh, about a week and a half ago, and it's ready again to re-pick. And you don't have to be too scientific, just cut it. It's tough stuff, it grows. You might wonder why I cut halfway down. It's because I want it to regrow fairly quickly. And on top of that, near the, the closer to the bottom that you cut, the dirtier it is because there's ground there. But it's primarily so that it'll grow fast for another cutting. I've got this screen which I made a number of years ago to use for cleaning the, the chicoria. It's made of uh, one by two wood and uh, chicken wire and uh, it has a little space between the top and the bottom so that uh, water uh, will uh, uh, drop from the uh, from the washing and uh, it works very very well so now i'm just going to turn it over Now I'm going to take these cuttings and put them in a pot for Yolanda. She's going to do the, the trick of cooking it. And and that's it. We're ready to go. And Yolanda could hardly wait to get them. Okay. So we've brought the chicotia in, and now I'm going to start washing. I'm going to throw handfuls in the sink, turn on the sprayer, and give it a good washing this way, and then bring in more. Keep doing this until you're done. I'm going to put the drain um, stopper in and then just let it one more rinsing. And now I'm just going to squish it around, make sure all the dirt is settled in the bottom. And that's like three washings. Okay, and I'm going to pull out just enough, maybe about a third, to be used on the pizza. The rest will be used for salads and maybe just to get away. We'll see what 
you do with that. So to start, I'm going to have to heat up the pan. Generally, there's enough water right here to steam it, so you wouldn't have to add any more. So we're going to bring it over here. And I will just get it heated up. Maybe I'll just put the lid on, get it hot, and steam it for a few minutes. While this is steaming, hasn't started yet, I'm going to start chopping the garlic because I want to saute it. I'm going to drain it first and then I'm going to saute it with some garlic and salt. And then um, we can use it right on the pizza. So I'll start by using this marvelous garlic from Quebec, which I'm going to squish down. And I'm going to That's how fresh it is. <laughs> wow, nice crunch. Okay, so I'll peel off the edges. Wow, this is so beautiful. It smells so good. Okay, that should do it. Okay, I see it's starting to simmer. So, give it a stir. This is a tougher uh, kind of, uh, just say, chicoria. There's just so many different grades of it, but this one is tough, so I'm going to have to let it, put it on, let it go on high heat. It's just about half the amount of it I had originally put in here for one thing, so it's good. I'm gonna shut it. I'm gonna drain it in, in the sieve. And then I'm gonna chop it a bit and bring it back to the stove. Okay, I'll try that out. Just let it dry. Get the oil in there, say about a spoonful. Yeah. And um, get the garlic going. Start softening it. Turn it up a bit now because you want to just flavor the oil, I guess. Soften the garlic. So, okay, that should do it for a minute. Now, I'm going to take this sieved part and I'm going to chop it. So, I want to make sure it's pretty well as dry as can be. Make sure you squeeze the juice out. Okay. Leave it here on your cutting board. Give this a stir. You don't want to brown this too much. It looks like it's pretty good. Turn that down. Okay, I'm going to just... Just slice it, chop it. <laughs> do what you have to do to just make it in small pieces. Okay, it's probably enough. Very, very low heat, okay, at this point, because you're just trying to mix it up and, and give it some flavor, that's all. Not much, when you look at it now, compared to how much I put in there, this is what I'm down to, but it should be enough to cover one pizza. We're going to make pizza dough, and it's going to be probably just enough for 
one of these pans and one of those pans, I'm hoping. And um, I'm going to start with my large bowl, which not everyone owns one, but this is my favorite kind. It seems to rise faster. <laughs> However, this is just as good. This is more common. Anyway, I'm going to start with hot water, two thirds of a cup. The reason I'm starting with hot water, it's not quite boiling, it's just hot, is because I'm going to be using yeast that has been frozen. It works. <laughs> However, there goes the two thirds cup of hot water. And I'm going to add a teaspoon or less of sugar. It helps the rising. And here is the frozen yeast. And I'm going to add five teaspoons to this. Okay. Three, four, and five. Okay, I'm going to stir it to get it going. And it's going to sit here now for at least 10 minutes and, you know, it'll foam up on its own. Okay, now this to me is perfect. We've had bubbling and we've had rising here going on. It's working and that is a good look. So now we're going to finish off the ingredients and I heated up water again. This time it's still two thirds of a cup like before. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And I'm going to add salt, about a teaspoon. Um, half to one half to one teaspoon. And olive oil or EVOO, whatever. And we're going to put four tablespoons in because this is a double batch. And it's smelling beautifully. <laughs> okay. Stir that up a wee bit. And then the next step is flour. And I, I'm going to be using between four and five cups of flour, but it's mainly whole wheat today. So uh, this is my measuring cup and it's, you just have to use your hand and you can tell. That's one. Two. And first I'll incorporate that for a while. Okay, then I'll put in another couple of cups. Now, this is just all-purpose or unbleached flour today, actually, it's called. And I'm going to add one of those. Now, I could tell by handling it whether it's going to need more flour because it's hard to tell until you really start kneading. And there's a consistency, of course, that you're expecting. It's not too dry, not too wet, I hope. But you try to do what you can with your spatula before you get to the kneading stage. And then you turn this all out onto your counter, which you keep your flour nearby because you don't want it to stick too much. And you can start kneading about that point there. When you... So here it goes. just a matter of getting your hands in there, of course. You can't do it any other way. Um, you can do this up until, you know, say five minutes, but sometimes you don't have to knead it as long as you think you do. It depends how it feels. Now, I feel everything coming together very nicely. Um, 
I think I'm going to add a little bit more flour so it doesn't stick. So kneading is a matter of just pushing down on it and turning it at the same time. And it's feeling really good now. It's not too sticky or too dry. So I'm going to put it into the pan, which I should have thought of this before, but I, I could do this. A little bit of oil on the bottom, spread it around, and drop your dough in it. But turn it over once to get the oil on both sides. And now you're going to cover it either with a tea towel, or in this case, this is just wax paper, recycled. And I'm going to put it on top of the fridge because there's a little bit of warm air comes up from the back and it'll help it to rise. But if you don't have that kind of a fridge, say, you could put it in a warm oven. First heat up the, the oven, shut it off, say when it gets to 100, and put your dough in there. However, this is good. And I'll leave it there for about an hour and check it. That's about it. There's not much to do now. It's going to work and you don't have to work. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to oil the pans in preparation for the dough. So I'm going to start by just eyeballing this. And I have this little paint brush, which I use just for oiling. Very handy. This is, by the way, what it looks like. It has risen for a couple of hours. And because it's whole wheat dough, it probably is not as high as, as like all white flour of any kind. It's just a heavier flour, but it still works very well. Okay, I'm going to cut the dough in half. First, I'm going to wet my knife. Makes it easier. And more or less half. Now, I'm going to work with this on the counter because I need to get it as thin as I can. Um, this is one. This will be for the square one and this will be for the round one. Okay, I might need a little bit of flour here at this point. So, so you just start working it with your hands. If you are a flipper and you know how to do it up in the air, good luck. I can't do it. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to shape it with my hands as long as I can here. More or less into a rectangle, I guess, for this pan. And add a little flour now and again. Okay, I'm going to turn on my GE electric oven and I'm going to put it at 410 degrees. It works for me. Maybe your oven is different. You could fool around with that temperature. So I start it and that way it'll be heating as I'm putting the pizzas together. And, um, and I want to show you that I have two racks in the oven and they're probably at the right height. So halfway through, I'm going to cook these, by the way, for about 20 minutes, but at the 10 minute mark, halfway through, I'm going to switch the pizzas, not the racks, just the pizzas, because I think they, the bottom is usually cooked better, at least in my oven. The round pizza, I think we're going to do it just green. So I'm not going to put any tomato sauce on the bottom. I'm just going to do what I can see here. But if, I, if this isn't enough, I'm going to add some other veggies or just part of it. So I'm going to have to just start spooning it in and spreading it. Now, 
just going to get my mozzarella cheese. If you like Parmesan too, you could do that, but for my purposes, this should do it. The mozzarella cheese is grated. It's, it's all ready to go. I do this all the time. Sometimes I buy the whole one, you know, whole mozzarella ball, grate it up, freeze it. It's always handy. So I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil on top. Okay. <laughs> It's 410 degrees, and I'm going to put the pizzas in, one in each rack, and I'm going to just time this so that in 10 minutes I can switch it around. We're back to take the pizza out of the oven because it's now done after 20 minutes. So let's see what we've got. is the green pizza and it's like brown around the edges like it should be and a little brown on top so I'm thinking it's good to eat right now. And the crust is a medium thickness. It's, oh the crust is about medium thickness. Yeah. And, uh, I think I'm going to lift up. See it's crispy. So it's going to be okay. Well, we'll taste it soon enough. We start with John. Okay, John. Salute the cook. Salute. Salute. That's it. Let's okay. Mmm, a winner. That's nice. Perfect. Nicely cooked, and the greens are really tastes well. And you don't taste the bitterness no. so much when it's on a pizza and dressed with cheese. This so. this is a winner. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think this is all in all, I have to say it's um, really a gift to have Chicoria. And you know, if you look upon it as just being bitter, and you know, it'll turn you off, but if you think of what it can do, then it's an asset. So I like Chicotia. And this is what Chicotia is it's life.